Hello there and welcome back to the Dan Cave and welcome to part 6 of the 12 scale Tamiya Suzuki GSX RR Moto GP bike. So we're here. I'm back quicker than I expected. Normally this part of the build, uh, particularly towards the end, takes a little bit longer but you know what? We're here, part six, and it is the finale. This is the grand finale of this video build series. Uh, so yeah, so I kind of didn't expect part six to come around this quickly, but a couple of good days at the bench last weekend, a bit of a push, and it's done. And the video's done pretty quickly as well. So yeah, it's been it's been a good uh, good modeling week and a good vid video editing week. So. Uh, yeah, so welcome to part six and welcome to the finale of this video build series. So uh, if you're new here, and you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Uh, go back and watch the other videos if you've not done so and see the full all six parts. Uh, don't forget to give the videos a like as well if you do. And don't forget to give this video a like as well, please. Uh, if you are a subscriber, thank you for coming back. Thank you for being a subscriber and don't forget to like and uh, of course comments are always welcome so you don't want to sit here looking at me you want to you want to see how this gets to the end so last part we got as far as exhaust radiator forks so it was pretty much all the kind of leftover little small bits that need to get done of which there was actually a huge amount uh that's covered here that kind of final polishing stage of the the 2k from earlier on and then on to that kind of final assembly bit and then that's it video build is done so yeah i'm not going to hang around anymore let's head straight on over to the bench and let's uh, take a look at how part six went together i will be back at the end for a little bit of a summary that was a little bit abrupt but I did want to crack on. So first up, which is a uh, paddock stand. So I probably should have done the paddock stand a little bit earlier. Uh, it would have been useful earlier in the build sequence when I started putting wheels on. Uh, it would have given me somewhere to place the bike and have it stood upright. But I didn't. I left it until now. So let's get on with it. So usual process off the sprue uh, using a brand new set of Tamiya uh side cutters well they're not side cutters but you know nippers whatever you want to call them uh and uh yeah this sort of three parts for the paddock stand kind of frame uh so a little bit of cleanup required not a huge amount as per the rest of the kit and then just stick it together with some tamiya extra thin so once that is done that's added to the priming list it'll be primed in ump black and then I think it's eventually painted in Tamiya LP70. So, with that off screen, get prepped. Uh, a little bit of work just to add in some of the hose work uh, in and around the brakes. And uh, yeah, I think it's mainly the brakes actually just on this kit. Uh, everything else would be buried away and hidden. Uh, so it's kind of the usual process. The callouts on the instruction sheet are one to one scale, so use them as a reference measurement. Uh, trim them to length and then use a little bit of CA glue and uh, carefully, probably carefully than I've just done it, uh, carefully kind of push the end onto the, uh, the hose attachment point. Uh, now you can use PVA for this. PVA obviously gives you the benefit that if it goes a little bit wrong, you can correct it. Most of the time it goes okay for me with a little bit of CA glue. So that's the hose work done at the front. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous part, there's a little bit of brush painting touch up on the exhaust, just where the uh, X32 titanium silver didn't quite blend together properly. So that's just touched up a little bit of brush painting uh, and that's an easy job. So we can now move on to prepping the fuel tank. Uh, so it comes in two parts. 
uh, basically get them off the sprue, usual process, trim the attachment points, and uh, some Tamiya Extra Thin will do the job and glue them together. So once that's had a little bit of curing time, you can go back and clean up any of the uh, the joints. Although, to be honest, most of them will not be visible on the kit anyway. Uh, when it's in its kind of sub-assembly state or when it's in its full assembly state, almost nothing of that is visible. Uh, so in addition to the fuel tank, there's a whole load of little smaller bits in and around. So there's the seat, the pad at the back of the seat. Uh, there's the gear lever. Was it gear lever? Yes, gear lever. Uh, clutch cover. Uh, a couple of carbon fairings for the side of the fuel tank. Uh, just basically a whole host of parts. Uh, pretty much all of them need to be primed in UMP black because uh, they're either going to get carboned, they'll either come out in semi-gloss black, so we'll probably just leave it in the UMP black primer colour, uh, or they're going to be a metallic colour, which is what will be done to this, which is the camera that basically gets mounted on the rear of the bike. So, as I was building the rest of it, I did spot that the Michelin decals on the tyres were a little bit shiny. Uh, so, I'm just using a little bit of uh, Windsor Newton Gallery and matte varnish just to run a little bit over with a brush, just to dull them down a little bit. Uh, and that does kind of blend them in a little bit better with the tyres. They don't stick out quite as shiny. So, that can be set to, set to one side. So, all the parts that were taken off earlier, they've all been primed off screen. Uh, and now I can just add some of the carbon fiber decals to them. So it is the usual uh, deckling process. There is some warm water off screen uh, and I'm using the UMP strong. Uh, so I've worked with these carbon decals kind of all the way through the build. Uh, pretty much now at this stage that just hit them with the strong and they will conform absolutely perfectly. So obviously there's the usual kind of a little bit of careful work just to work the decal into place get the decal solutions down onto them and then work all the edges, work out all the creases, etc. Uh, so on this particular part, there is actually three decals in total. One of them is incredibly small, but it fits perfectly. They are perfectly cut to size. So thank you, uh, Mr. Ward at Scale Motor Hobbies for that. So clutch cover itself uh, may seem like quite a complex part, but with the carbon already pre-cut, it's just a case of getting it lined up and then hitting it with the UMP strong. Uh, and the decal pretty much melts into place and it looks spot on at the end. But to get there, there's a little bit of patience required. Apply your solutions, leave it sit for a bit, make sure you clean up any any kind of excess decal solution uh, and then start working it with the brush get it nice and soft and it will conform around all those kind of shapes in around the uh, the clutch cover and then there's a second decal which goes around the outside of the clutch cover as well that's pretty much the same process with that a careful bit of placement and then hit it with the UMP strong decal solution. What I will say is once you start using the decal solution, those decals can't really be moved at that stage. You might get away with a little bit of movement, but they basically are, are stuck where they are. So as you can see, all the other components have been off and sprayed in their various metallic colors. So there's a mixture of LP70 for the uh, paddock stand and the fuel tank. Now the fuel tank itself needs to be in two-tone. Uh, so one half of it is uh, in gloss aluminium, so LP70. Uh, and the other half is going to be painted in gold. And I think for this... I think I've used Vallejo Model Air Gold, actually. 
just because I had it at hand and it was already mixed. And to be honest, most of this is not going to be visible once the kit is finished. So the pigments aren't as fine as, say, in the Super Metallics or even the Tami LPs. But for where it's going to be located, it's not going to be visible. So a little bit of careful masking. Get it over to spray boot, spray the gold, and then we're back again and we can remove the masking tape and make sure their demarcation has come out spot on. Although the reality is you're not going to see this part particularly well uh, unless you display the kit in a partially disassembled state, which I'm not going to. So we did also mask the top of the tank because that's in uh, semi-gloss black, just where the fuel feller is. Fuel filler? Fuel filler, even. Yep, so that looks nice and completed. So, a couple of decals which need to go down. Uh, so, there's two decals for the paddock stand, just a Suzuki logo on either side. And then there's a decal for the front of the camera, and there's a decal for the exhaust as well. So in this case, I didn't have the hot water off screen, so just use a little bit of water down on the uh, cutting mat. Temperatures are very high in the UK at the moment anyway, so there's no real issue getting them to release from the backing paper. So as they're quite small decals, I'm literally just grabbing them off the backing paper and popping them in place. And then just using a cotton bud just to mop up any excess. So when it's down fresh like this, really just want to do some careful rolling across the surface. Make sure you're not putting any pressure on the decal to move it because it will likely move at this stage. So just careful light pressure, a little bit of rolling action just to soak up any excess liquid. So with that completed, those extra decals, uh, so there's a couple of areas of the bike which needed a little bit of a wash. Uh, so I've gone to use the UMP Dark Dirt, which is a water-based wash. So this wash is getting applied to the radiator, uh, some of the brake discs, and then also the exhaust. A uh, particular focus on the exhaust uh, tips, basically getting getting some depth uh, to those uh, hexagonal shaped end cans or that hexagonal mesh on the end cans. Uh, so it's quite a useful wash. I quite like it. Uh, not quite as dark as some of the enamel based dark washes. Uh, and it's easy to clean up because water based. So as you can see, I'm just making sure we get plenty in around the, the ends of the exhaust because uh, that will add to the depth. And of course, uh, I don't have the photo etched components for the end because I get, didn't get the detail upset. But the wash itself is easy enough to apply. Uh, give it about a half an hour to dry. Once it's been applied, And then you can go back in with a moist cotton bud with some water on it and uh, clean up any excess as you wish. So with that all done, uh, it's time to go back and have a look at the bodywork. So all of this was 2K'd way back in part two, uh, which in real time is actually quite a while ago. Uh, but it does need a little bit of a flat and polish. Uh, so there's no real dust marks in it. I've been quite lucky with these parts. Uh, so I'm going to start with the 8000 grit micro mesh. And literally, I'm just trying to knock down any of the kind of top shininess and any slight imperfections in the surface. But to be honest, to my eye, there's not a huge amount uh, on this 2K finish, which I am uh, pretty well pleased with, actually. So it's a case of working through all the individual components, uh, working through the 8,000 grit and then onto the 12,000 grit. Uh, using it wet, of course, uh, and then drying the parts as you go, see how much of an effect you've had. So basically back and forth motion, 
uh, trying to keep it relatively consistent. With bike components, of course, you need to be very, very careful of any of the kind of edges, the changes in shape, of which there's quite a lot on bike fairing. Uh, so a lot of care is needed to make sure you don't burn through, because burning through is not only is it an absolute pain, it's incredibly easy to do, uh, especially on these bike kits with so many edges to work with. But some careful sanding with the 8,000 and 12,000, and that will improve uh, basically the finish of that 2K just enough that with the addition of polish, it looks pretty much uh, spot on to my eye anyway. So once all that flattening, flattening is done, uh, it's out with the UMP polishing system. So starting with compound number one. Uh, so it can settle a little bit. Uh, when it's not been used for a while. Uh, so I like to give it a good stir before I get started. Just to mix that uh, compound up with the liquid in the tub. So, liberal amount uh, on a, basically a section of used t-shirt. Uh, cotton is very, very good as a polishing cloth. Uh, so just apply it liberally over the part, back and forth motion, uh, get it to the dry stage, and then just buff it off with another clean piece of former white t-shirt. Uh, so I'm just using a cotton bud, a little bit moistened, just to remove any uh, excess residue in any crevices or recessed areas. Uh, probably need to go back and remove more later uh, but at the moment just kind of getting rid of any of the kind of heavy excess shall we say so repeat that across all the fairing parts uh, tend to use the one compound across all the parts uh, apply it all liberal amount let it dry buff it off so in this case i'm addressing the kind of front and upper fairing part so again, even with the polishing compound, you do need to be careful on the edges, uh, any kind of raised parts for bolt heads, etc. You need to be very, very careful with. Because uh, you don't want to burn through at this stage and ruin all that hard work. So I've say I'm very, very pleased with the outcome of actually the paint in 2k the zero paints in this case worked superbly uh the color itself the blue color is fantastic uh and it's represented very very well by zero paints in this case that the pigments are very very fine in it the decals from tb decals uh, not great they just about do the job now where does the black decal on the black paint close up but i can still see a little bit of kind of demarcation between the black decal and the black paint but it's not horrendously obvious and to be honest it's only because i can actually see it myself that it's uh that i think it's visible i think to the kind of passing eye it's probably okay so once we're finished with the compound uh we can move on to the polish which is number two uh, it's just pretty much the same process as before, applying a liberal amount, kind of polishing it in until it's nice and dry, and then buffing off on any of the remnants. And that should leave you with uh, a very high sheen finish. Because uh, of the complex shape and the, you know, the, the, the addition of kind of later parts, etc. So I'm not going to use a wax leaves too much residue uh, and I'm probably only going to use a small amount of the shine which is the spray bottle that comes with the set so that probably won't be used a lot so you're really dependent certainly on step one and step two to get the, the best finish out of this and again caution around edges caution around any kind of changes in the fairing any bolt heads rivet heads whatever they are just be very, very careful. 
because certainly at this stage, you definitely don't want any burn through. So luckily enough with this 2K finish, I've had no runs, no major blemishes, hardly any visible dust. Uh, I think out of the gun, it's probably one of the better coverage finishes I've gotten out of 2K. Uh, there's a little bit of kind of orange peel in a few areas, but the flattening and polishing have sorted that. So once I'm happy with the polishing compound and the actually step the compound and the polish of so step number one and two, uh, the inside the fairings are getting a coat of matte black. Now there are some carbon fiber decals in the the carbon set that I've got. I'm probably never going to display this bike with the fairings off. So I don't really see the need to add it. Uh, these parts are not highly visible. So for me, just a coat of matte black paint, just carefully brush painted in around is suitable and does the job. And that's pretty much enough for me of the matte black. So all the major fairing parts get that same treatment. Uh, so just matte black with a wide flat brush from Army Painter using a little bit of water just to help it flow a little bit better. And of course, because this is acrylic over the 2K finish, if there is any uh, paint that gets on a painted surface where you don't want it, uh, a little bit of UMP airbrush cleaner or some thinner on a cotton bud is enough just to remove that excess. Uh, and if you're not using a huge amount that will have absolutely no impact on the 2k whatsoever particularly as it's been sat curing for a couple of months almost so once that is done we can begin the final assembly stage which starts with uh, the rear fairing and the addition of the seat and the seat back so i'm just using a little bit of ca glue on the attachment points and just pop them in place like so. So fuel tank can now be added. Uh, so fuel tank is quite a tight fit. As you can see, here's me just trying to figure out the best way to squeeze it into the fairing. Uh, a little bit of pressure and it will slot straight in. Uh, there's a couple of locating pins. And it's just a case of carefully placing some CA glue. Don't get any on the paintwork. Uh, and just pop it into place. So as you can see, very little of the tank is actually visible. Uh, and once that's mounted on the rest of the frame, it'll be almost uh, non-visible, but still painted nonetheless. Uh, so then there's a couple of locating tabs for the underside of the fairing, which has been done in gloss black. Uh, there has been a decal added to that, which I forgot about from the instruction sheet. Uh, probably would have been better under the 2K, but it's not a highly visible area. Uh, from this particular bike, there should really be another monster decal, but that wasn't included in the set from TB, which is a little bit of an oversight on their part. So a little bit of a squeeze to get that part in, but once it pops in place, uh, there's a couple of locating points and a couple of screw holes just to line up this part of the fairing onto the frame. So just making sure everything is neatly lined up and it pops in like so. And then a couple of screws. Obviously be very careful. You don't want to scratch the paintwork. Yeah, one screw on each side. And that pops in perfectly nicely. Uh, so there's a couple of carbon pieces which go down the side of the, well, air box cover, top of the fuel tank. On a road bike, this is pretty much where the fuel tank would traditionally be. On a MotoGP bike, the rider actually sits on the fuel tank. 
So this is really just a cover for the airbox on the top of the tank. Uh, so one of the pieces of tubing needs to basically slot in under the fuel tank. And then it's just left uh, unconnected on the underside. So again, another example of the perfect fit. That fuel tank lines up perfectly with the opening in the top of the cover. And um, once again, there's a couple of screw in points and a couple of screws to go in either side. And it's beginning to take shape and look like a MotoGP bike. So front wing has to be added. Uh, so I've gone with CA glue. You could use PVA glue as well if you wanted. Uh, there's a tiny little dot. Obviously a little bit of care using CA glue. You don't want it to drip anywhere or shift along or get dragged along by the pieces as you attach them. But a little bit of careful manipulation. And that just pops perfectly into place. And it was so much easier to assemble, paint, and carbon that separately. So, at this point, we can now add the front screen. Uh, so, just using a little bit of uh, Deluxe Materials Glue and Glaze, which is a PVA glue. Uh, it's basically three attachment points, all well out of sight, uh, attached from the underside and the screen will slot in absolutely perfectly. So with that now in place, uh, it's a case of just attaching this front fairing. Uh, now the fit here is absolutely perfect, considering the way that radiator is mounted with a separate part to align the bottom. The fit uh, is absolutely spot on because there's a couple of alignment pins just at the bottom. And they go in absolutely perfectly with that front fairing in place. Uh, can now attach the bottom part. And again, this lines up perfectly with everything else. So the actual fit from this Tamiya kit is absolutely spot on. So once those uh, locating pins are all lined up, there's a couple of screws then to attach the bottom part of the fairing. Now, for anyone else building this out there, I would recommend putting on the side panels first uh, before putting on the bottom part. If I'd read the instructions, I probably would have said that, but I didn't check and just cracked on nonetheless. So there was a little bit of manipulation needed just to get them to slide in under. Uh, they would have been easier if done before the bottom part of the fairing. But once I'd figured out the manipulation, they do slot in reasonably well. In fact, they slot in perfectly well. And once again, the alignment on this kit is absolutely spot on. There's a couple of retaining tabs on the front and on the bottom, and then two screw holes, uh, one on either side, at the very top of the fairing. So that looks pretty good to my eye. Looks pretty well lined up. So all in all, very happy with that progress so far. So once again, it's just a case of finding the appropriate screws. Uh, I think they're four mil screws from recollection, maybe two and a half mil, not a hundred percent sure. There's me just trying to locate the screwdriver. And then trying to pick up the screw. Uh, so screwdrivers are magnetic, so they will pick up the screws quite easily, which is quite handy. And then it's a case of screwing the part in place. Uh, 
and then same process on the other side. Once again, just checking the alignment of the fairing and it all looks spot on. So a couple more decals to add. Uh, there's the, the mirror, uh, Frejuan mirror, uh, with number one in the middle to show that he's a world champion. And then there's a whole load of basically rivet head covers and bolt head covers, which go on the outside of the bike. So I've left these until the end because I didn't want them under the 2K and looking like they've been cleared over. I wanted them to have a little bit of a tonal difference from the rest of the bike. Uh, a little bit of UMP strong helps them settle in as well. So camera gets added to the rear. Just checking the tightness of some of the screws, make sure everything is securely in place. Yep, definitely happy with that. There's another little sensor box of some sort, which goes on the rear fairing. And then there's basically the little camera port for the front of the bike. And then it's a case of using the spray cleaner, that spray uh, UMP number four spray shine just to give uh, the outside of the bike a little bit of a buff up just to get it sparkling a little bit better and remove any fingerprints basically so with that done there's one final step for this which is the addition of the clear uh, grip pads I suppose they are give the uh, rider something to grip onto with their legs uh, so they don't fly off the motorbike when braking so I've used a little bit of PVA glue on the back of these parts. Hopefully that will dry completely clear and will be basically invisible once it's completely dry. So this is the, well, this is basically the absolute final step. Uh, once this is done, probably a quick uh, wipe down, get rid of any further fingerprints. And this bike is done. So it's time to get everything cleaned up, uh, working surface and the bike itself. And we can head on over and have a look at the final photos. So there it is. Absolutely delighted with the finish of this bike. Uh, really pleased with the colors, really pleased with the paint. Despite my moaning about the decals, they actually look okay in the photos. Uh, in these photos, the PVA hasn't quite cured completely, but on the shelf, that PVA is almost invisible now. Uh, so it's still curing. So I literally took the photos just as soon as I was finished attaching those parts. And there's the kit next to the RGV that I did last year. So with that as the final pose, let's head back to me for some final thoughts. So there we have it. That is uh, the video build series done. That's the build complete. You've seen the final pictures. Uh, general thoughts. That's a fine kit from Tamiya. It's, uh, it's a fine looking motorbike as well. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a lovely colour scheme. I'm sure I've mentioned it during the video, but that... That blue is spot on. It's a uh, little bit reminiscent of the Rizla blue that Suzuki had a few years back. Uh, but also kind of evokes that kind of standard uh, Suzuki blue colour as well. Not quite as dark, but that kind of metallic blue. Uh, the paints themselves, in this case from Zero, were spot on. Uh, well done to them. The kit itself, uh, pretty much flawless. Yeah, I'd go so far as to say that that's flawless in terms of the, the fit. I think any issues I had, like if you go back to part one, there was a little bit of an issue fitting the underside piece of the, the kind of tail. Uh, that didn't quite go as well, but that was entirely down to me not executing it particularly well. 
apart from that, everything else was spot on. I mean, some of the parts that could have had fit issues, like uh, the radiator, for example. So the radiator mounts at the top to two recess points in the front of the frame. At the bottom, there's a separate piece, which then links the bottom of the rad to the bottom of the engine. Spot on. But then on the side of the radiator, there's two... Uh, two pins for which there's uh, little holes mounted in the front fairing. Uh, that goes together spot on. Then of course you've got the other fairing pieces which attach as well. And all that alignment was absolutely perfect. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't say much more than that. I mean, if you, if you don't have one, go get one. It's a fantastic kit. Uh, even if it's not your preferred subject, just try it it's it's well worth it very very enjoyable uh it's a lot of hard work it's a big part count there's a lot of parts in there uh i was going to think about why did this one take me kind of quite a bit longer than maybe some of the other ones well particularly bike kits bike kits are a little bit longer anyway because they're a little bit more complex and broken up in their build so they, they seem to take a little bit longer plus they always have engines uh and in 12 scale they need to be at least a little bit more refined in their execution, shall we say. So some of the previous kind of MotoGP bikes are pretty much you'll assemble the engine. It'll be sprayed XF56 or, you know, sprayed in X18 semi-gloss black or aluminium or something. And then there'll be a handful of parts which will be a different colour. On this particular bike, on this MotoGP engine... For this bike there's just so many different color call outs and that's just on the engine part then there's all the kind of accessories and ancillary parts that fit on it there's you know the clutch the the radiator hoses the various carbon fiber bits the little cover that goes on the clutch the fact that the clutch spins on its own uh poly cap for example so all those things just add to the amount of individual steps is that worth it yes it is Will I build another? Yes. Uh, I think so far I think I've counted up probably four different decal options. Which, you know, considering it's it's one, one bike run by one team, that's quite good. Because you've got the year I've done, which is not the box scheme. You've got the box scheme. You've got 2022, which will sadly be probably their last season as well. Uh, and then I've seen a scheme listed which goes back to 2019. Now, I don't know how different the bike is. There might be some slight differences which will need to be worked in. But again, you've got different schemes for every year. Uh, you can do the different riders as well. You can do, you know, uh, Alex Rins as well or Jean Mir. You can do, uh, in the box kit, you can also do Sylvain Gantoli, the test rider as well. So plenty of options to do. But if you've not got one, go get one. It's well worth building. Uh and I'm, yeah, pretty darn pleased. I mean, you know, as always, there's things in there. I kind of knew I would have liked to have done better. I could have done better. Yeah. It's on the shelf. Looks fantastic. Very happy with it. Uh, so, yeah. I'm going to stop, stop uh, rambling on about how much I enjoyed it. And, uh, of course, say thank you to everyone who's watched. Thank you to everyone who's watched the video build series. Uh... It's another six parter, so there's a lot of kind of a lot of ground to cover in all six parts, but it, but I think it adequately covers how this build has gone. Uh, so yeah, so thank you to everyone. Uh, of course, if you are a subscriber, thank you already. Please give a like. Please leave a comment. If you're not a subscriber yet, and it's your first time watching, go check out the other parts. Like this video. Like the other videos. Subscribe. Also, feel free to comment as well. All the usual stuff. I've now rambled now for nearly six minutes. In fact, it's six minutes now. Uh, so I'm going to shut up and say, uh, yeah, that's it. We're done. Thank you. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you all in the next video build series, which is going to be the Subaru Legacy, which will be coming your way very, very soon. So thank you all for watching. Bye bye. And see you sometime in the future. Bye-bye.